Can you tell us how your life has changed since your procedure at the Spectrum Institute? Things are completely different. I, I can't begin to tell you how long I struggled with this decision, but deep down I knew that I had to do it. And now that I have, my relationships at work, uh, my personal relationships, have they've all done a complete 180. If you had to do it all over again, would you? Absolutely. Early in my career, I was given the monumental task of researching rare and degenerative skin disorders such as albinism or vitiligo, commonly known as skin bleaching. Vitiligo permanently damages the melanocytes. Those are the cells that produce pigment. Five years ago, I was able to identify the exact genetic marker responsible for causing pigmentation in the skin. This particular patient, 43 years of age when he started our procedure, suffered from vitiligo nearly half of his life. After his first treatment, after three months, and after merely six months, there is virtually no sign of skin discoloration at all. We here at the Spectrum Institute could no longer ignore the immeasurable benefit this procedure could have for a growing number of Americans suffering from dysphoria or transracialism. So, imagine never having to suffer discrimination again by being born into the wrong race. Call now. Our operators are on standby 24 hours a day to meet your racial integration needs. Sorry, Mr. Drake. Dr. Gray's ready to see you. Cool. Thank you, Amber. Um. <sighs> Put him through, please. Yep. Yeah, this is Dr. Gray. Yes, I understand. Sure. Yeah. Uh, Donovan. Okay, give me a minute. No, I, I can't do that because that would be inappropriate. Wouldn't you agree? Look, I'm, I'm not here to help you make those decisions. I am here to help you make this procedure as, as smooth and painless as possible. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm sorry you feel that way. Well, perhaps this is not the right time for you. Yeah, thank you for contacting me, Spectrum Institute. Dissatisfied customer? Oh, you would know that better than anyone, Donovan. This procedure is not for everyone. <laughs> that being said, how are you feeling? Tomorrow is the big day. <laughs> is that to have asked me if I'm having cold feet or something? Well, with a procedure of this magnitude, pre-op jitters are not unheard of. Well, Doc, um, I'd be lying to you if I told you I wasn't feeling a little bit Apprehensive. Such as? Same old broken record. Family, friends. Uh, uh, listen, listen, listen. It's not like you're getting a new coat of paint on your SUV, okay? Your concerns are well founded. After all, tomorrow is too late. I've been ready for this for as long as I can remember. To finally have the world see me for who I am, not for who they've been taught to see me as. My whole life I've been treated as a token or a novelty. I just want to be treated as an equal. And you deserve nothing less, Donovan. You were born with a very uh, specific birth defect. Tomorrow, I'm going to correct that defect. <laughs> Good. From your lips, Dr. Gray. Any other objections? Uh, mind you, you are making the right choice. No, not for where I'm sitting, no. You sure? <laughs> Speak.
speak now or forever hold your peace. <laughs> That's what they say. No, I'm good to go. Good. Then let's get started with the final paperwork. All right, let's do it. So, how'd I read tonight? Oh, gosh. Oh. Do you really want to know? Yeah, of course I do. Well, then, have a seat, and I will be happy oh. to tell you. <laughs> Well, you get a 10 for the restaurant. Okay. You know I've been dying to check out that new Thai place. And you get a 10 for the theater, too. I know it wasn't easy getting reservations for balcony seats. And? And that is the last time I let <laughs> you pick the movie on date night. You know how much I hate that sci-fi nonsense. I Ugh. thought you loved Tom Cruise. <laughs> oh, no, I love rom-com Tom. I ain't so interested in action hero Tom. It's always just a lot of him running, and tonight was no exception. How is this movie any more unrealistic than the dozens of romantic, goofy comedies you forced me to? Oh, goofy! Uh, yeah. Okay, so you mean to tell me that you don't believe in love at first sight? Because that's not what you told me on our second date. Well, you remember what you were wearing on that date? <laughs> Girl, I would have told you I could cancer. <laughs> oh, my hero. Hey, don't wait to play Oh, if you ever <laughs> want to see me naked again, do not finish that oh, sentence. <laughs> Are you saying that you don't even believe in soulmates? Do I believe that there's one person in the whole wide world I'm destined to be with? Mm. No, sorry. The hell did I ever see in you? <laughs> <laughs> Look, I didn't have to rescue you from some forbidden tower in a castle. Yet there is something undeniably special about our encounter. It's like turning lead into gold. Did you just compare our first date to a chemistry set? <laughs> Sharing a table at Starbucks hardly counts as a date. Oh, so now you're calling me cheap. <laughs> look, look, listen to me. I'm trying to say if you'll let me. I can't remember. I can't remember what my life was like before I met you. Mm -hmm. And no matter what, I can never go back to being who I was. Mm -hmm. <laughs> This is the last time I'm gonna see you like this. Yeah. So, um, wanna piss off the answers for one last time? A little jungle love? <laughs> I'm serious, Donnie. Babe, I thought you were okay with this. I mean, Dr. Gray said it was Dr. Like, Gray uh, is nothing but a used car salesman. I'm not concerned with his advice. Okay, fine, all right. Just forget about it. I thought you wanted this for me, too. I do, baby, I do. It's just. What if it changes things? It's kind of the point. No, I mean, between us. What if it changes things between you and me? So now we're back to that, huh? No, that's, that's not what I'm saying. I, then what are you saying? That, that you wouldn't love me if I was white? I would love you if, if you were purple. The color of your skin does not matter to me. It never has, and you know that. Well, look. The man who comes home to you tomorrow night is the same man you fell in love with. Just different gift wrapping, that's all. Donovan, I, oh, I know that I am incredibly selfish to ask you this right now, but would you please just stay the way you are? Don't go through with this procedure, okay? Don't change. You know something? You're right. You are being incredibly selfish. How you been? Oh, it's been a while. Yeah. 
Sorry, I'm late. No big deal. I just got here myself. What time is your appointment? Um, 9.30. Oh, I got plenty of time. I got coffee coming. Yeah, thanks. Appreciate that. <laughs> so what was so important you had to get me up at the ass crack at dawn? It's 8 o'clock. My line of work is pretty much the same thing. You're a freelance cameraman and a bartender. Right? Yeah, and both of those occupations require me to be up at all hours of the night. Yeah. So what fraternity is he from? Look, it's not about me. It's about you. Speaking of late, this will be the last time you get to use colored people time as an excuse. TPT, really? Yeah. You know, Russ, I don't think you can use that term. What? I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I say what I want to. Oh, oh thank you. Thank you. Last time you got me up this early, you were thinking about asking Seth to marry you. How'd that go? Yeah, um, I have to get back to you on that. And that wasn't the last time I asked you out this early. Oh, yeah, that's right. The last time was about Operation Whitewash. Come on, man, don't start with this shit, all right? You already know how I feel about this, D. I could have saved you the trip. All right, just, just hit me out, right? Just tell me out. You already ordered breakfast, so just chill. You're lucky I already ordered. And I'm starving. Man, these frat boys these days, they're all Red Bull and testosterone. It's exhausting. I have no idea why these frat boys always after you. Daddy issues, helping to work through their daddy issues. I'm just playing my part. Drama queen. Uncle Tom. It's called transracial. <laughs> it's a crock of shit and you know it. It is what it is, man. Okay, I want you to tell me how this is any different than you coming out to me. What? Like asking me what's the difference between the Easter Bunny and Anderson Cooper. One is a magical creature who brings joy to millions, and the other's a rabbit. I'm glad I also opened it when you busted out of the closet. Look, I'm gonna stop you right there because I know where you're going with this. Much to the chagrin of my racist and evangelical Southern Baptist grandmother, I've known I was gay since I was a little kid. The moment I saw Bo Duke slide across the hood of the General Lee, I knew. Save that part. All my friends were looking at Daisy Duke in her shorts. All I saw was jean jacket and chest hair. Done. Wasn't something I had to discover about myself. Damn sure wasn't a choice. So that's what your issue is about this, right? You think I'm choosing white over black? Look, man. You're one of the smartest, most practical, most well-rounded individuals I've ever met. You mean to tell me this Dr. Gray, this Spectrum Institute, this transracial shit doesn't seem a little weird to you? Look, I'm not trying to pass as white or, or fit in. I am white. Look, when my jeans should have zigged, they, they zagged instead. That's all. That's all. <laughs> you know what it sounds like? This sounds like if you told me, you know, if your father just would have played a few more games of catch with you when you were a kid, you'd be straight as an arrow now. Just be real for a moment here, right? The fact that you sleep with men doesn't nearly impede your life the way the color of my skin affects mine, and you know it. Fair enough. Look, I'm here for you, bro. No matter if I agree with your decision or not, you... We've been friends since seventh grade. You've always been there for me. It's the least I can do for you. But you, you gotta give me some time. This is big. Like this, I'm just not there yet. I mean, I will be, but. Well, get there pretty soon because after tomorrow, you're going to pretty fly white guy in the room. It's gonna take more than a new paint job for that. We'll see about that. <laughs> you know, something just dawned on me. What? You know, after all this time and all your soapbox about this procedure, I wonder if, um, would you be so high and mighty if the shoe was on the foot? Politics aside. You mean, so if I could level the social playing field and stay true to myself, somehow, would I do it? Exactly. It's not an easy question. Wow. Mm -hmm. 
The doctor's ready for you, Mr. Drake. Mr. Drake?